You're listening to the Relationships Uncomplicated Podcast. Relationship advice so valuable, you won't believe it's free. And now your host, relationship expert, Edith Chironi. Welcome back to another episode of Relationships Uncomplicated Podcast, episode 67. I'm your host, Edith Chironi. And today I talk about what hurt partners need the most in a fair recovery. I'll tell you what I've learned in my practice working with couples in the aftermath of infidelity, which aligns very well with what the research shows. And as always, I will make all of this practical and share with you six tasks that you can start implementing right away. And in case you're wondering if this episode is for you, so if you're in the aftermath of infidelity and you're either the hurt party or the unfaithful party, you can definitely benefit from this one. If you're not and you're just listening along, then that's perfectly okay. I'm sure you'll find some good tips here as well. But before we dive into all of this, I'd like to present our episode sponsor. This episode is sponsored by my infidelity recovery and healing program, It's Okay to Stay. If you're struggling in the aftermath of infidelity, but want to stay together, you can rebuild trust and heal through genuine expert help from me and my team personally. I started It's Okay to Stay after seeing couples therapy and self-help options often lacked essential components to help couples save their relationship after infidelity. It's Okay to Stay is a complete eight-week coaching program that involves an online roadmap course and one-on-one work with an affair recovery specialist. So if you have faith in your relationship and you want to stay together and heal, let's talk. I'm offering a 45-minute free consultation for couples who want to save their relationship and need expert help. If that's you, just go online to edicharoni.com forward slash 45 and pick a time for a video call that both you and your partner can commit to. I'll hop on. We're first going to start with understanding your struggle and then we're going to walk through It's Okay to Stay to see if the program is right for you. Look, so many couples try therapy and self-help methods only to be put at odds with each other. But that doesn't have to be you. With expert help, It's Okay to Stay will give you the clarity that you need to understand each other, to heal, and to find a path forward past infidelity. So again, all you have to do to book your free consultation is to go to edicharoni.com forward slash 45. That's I-D-I-T-S-H-A-R-O-N-I dot com forward slash 45. I'll be honored to stand alongside with you on this journey. Okay, now let's dive right into our topic for today. What hurt partners need the most in the aftermath of infidelity? I want you to take a moment and ask yourself this exact question. What do I or my hurt partner need the most now that we're in the aftermath of infidelity? What comes to mind? When I ask unfaithful partners or other people or even therapists, I often get the following. They'll say that hurt partners need to hear true remorse or that they need to be able to forgive or that they need to know why this happened and so on and so forth. These are all true and important, but we usually tend to go for the above before we go for the one fundamental thing any hurt partner needs before anything else, and it is for his or her pain to be heard. Now, imagine this scenario, a middle-class family with two parents in their 40s and three children, some of whom are teenagers. The wife used to work up until the first child was born, and now, as all three are school age, she is starting to think about going back to her career. Meanwhile, the husband financially supports the family, working hard at his business that requires travel quite often. The family enjoys financial stability and a nice lifestyle most people want, including private schools and vacations. 
Now, when the wife finds out her husband spent the last year having an affair with another woman, she crashes, but makes the decision to not end their relationship and work towards healing. But quite honestly, she feels like she's stuck with her anger and rage and finds herself having no outlet. She can't cry because the kids don't know anything and they might be around. She can't tell anyone because she knows this type of gossip is like wildfire. You know, people like to hear those things and they also like to continue to talk about those things with other people. It's very hard to keep something like this a secret. Now, she can't tell her mom or her parents because she knows that she might forgive him at some point, but the parents are going to find it very hard to forgive and they might not ever forgive him. And so the only outlet is really to talk about this is with her husband. And the times they try to talk about this very quickly turn into lashing out on her part and defensiveness or shutting down on his part. What a mess, right? Have you found yourself in this story or in parts of it? Does this even sound familiar? I know I've heard this in variations from most of the couples I've seen throughout the year. The almost non-existent opportunities for the hurt partner to express their pain and be heard. The loneliness around dealing with the aftermath of infidelity can be crazy making for both partners. But the hurt partner's inability to feel heard, acknowledged, and validated makes it impossible to start. In one of my trainings with the Gottman Institute called Treating Affairs and Trauma, this very topic was addressed. The treatment suggested by the Gottman Institute is in three phases, and the first phase is called a tone. It begins with the hearing of the pain meaning the unfaithful partner needs to listen non-defensively and patiently to the hurt party expressing their pain. Here's an interesting thing I learned in this training that explains this need. In her empirical study described in her book, The Monogamy Myth, Peggy Vaughn studied people who anonymously wrote about their affairs online. She identified differences between people whose relationships stay together versus those who broke up. She found that couples who stay together talked thoroughly about the affair with one another, while couples that broke up tried to move forward without talking about the affair. Here's the interesting part. The betraying partner's expression of remorse was as essential to the healing as was their ability to listen non-defensively to their hurt partner's emotions and answering their hurt partner's questions with absolute transparency. This is further supported by Dr. Shirley Glass's studies you can read about in her book, Not Just Friends. And as always, I'm going to put all the links to the books in the show notes. Okay, so here's a problem. If you know this important fact, how do you go about achieving it? How do you make sure the hurt partner's pain is hurt? All roads do not lead to Rome in this case. Quite the opposite. The hurt partner is often encouraged to move on, to stop obsessing, and possibly start fixing the marriage. Sometimes this is encouraged by the betraying partner and sometimes by a therapist. I can tell you that in my program, as much as I'm aware of this pitfall, I sometimes have to make sure I'm not leading forward before the pain was thoroughly heard. You might say this is making so much sense, so why is it not happening naturally? The reason is that one of the hardest things to do is to listen to pain. And when I say listen to pain, I mean stay present with someone else's pain. It's very hard to do. It is even harder to listen to your own spouse's pain, especially if you caused it. Another reason is that it is very hard to express pain without ending up in criticizing or lashing out. You see, people get into a super vicious cycle that starts with a hurt partner 
trying to talk about their pain and what they're going through. And it quickly spirals down to feeling unheard, which then in turn leads the other partner to shut down or to react in defensiveness. Vicious cycle. So how do you get out of this vicious cycle? Here are some things that you can do to make sure you're not trying to just move on or tend to other issues before hearing the pain. I divided it into two sets of tasks for each partner. We're going to start with the unfaithful partner's tasks. Task number one. If your hurt partner tries to tell you about what the infidelity did to him or her, be compassionate, listen carefully, acknowledge and validate your hurt partner's feelings, and in any way, shape, or form, do not engage in defensiveness. Now, I know, I know. If you're the unfaithful partner, you probably experienced situations where you felt attacked, where your character was attacked, and that can come in the form of you're a liar, I can't believe any word that comes out of your mouth, you're a bad husband, uh, you're, you know, what, whatever it is that your partner may have told you that basically talks about a character flaw. And it's very hard for people, for for any human being to accept that there's a flaw in their character. So your tendency is going to have to try to go with defending that. Or your tendency might be to go into your shame and kind of shut down and not respond and hope that this will end at some point. So I definitely advise you to not engage in defensiveness. And if you do shut down, please take a few moments and come back from this because your partner really, really needs you at this point. And what you can do is you can acknowledge their pain and you need to validate their pain. Okay, so this is task number one. Task number two that's going to help you with this is please don't leave the responsibility to talk about the hurt partner's pain in their hands only. Make sure you take some of the responsibility to ask and to check in with your partner, even if they seem like they're doing okay. I can't tell you how many times hurt partners feel like it's on them to talk about it, to bring it up. And sometimes they're so tired with this burden that they will stop talking about it. But underneath, this is not over for them. They're still experiencing all the pain, all the problems. It feels unresolved. And unfortunately, it's going to come out at some point. So I prefer you take 50% of the responsibility to bring it up to your partner, to check in with them, to ask them, how are you doing? Or you seem okay, but are you really okay? Or you seem upset, what's going on? That's task number two. Now task number three, make time to talk and prioritize it. You should be talking about this every day in the beginning. If there are children, go for a walk together, take a babysitter, whatever you need to do, please don't neglect it because it will come back to bite you, you know where. I am fully aware that parents today, couples today, people today in this world are very busy and that I'm sure you can find other things to do than to actually talk about the one thing you dread. If you're going to continue to, you know, push it to the side, try to move on, ignore the problem, it will come back. This type of thing is very tenacious. It's not going to just disappear and everything will be okay and time will heal. So make the time and not only make the time, prioritize it. It is so important for your hurt partner to see that this is a priority for you as much as it is a priority for them. Okay, 
Now let's talk about the hurt partner's tasks. You would think that all you have to do is talk about your pain, but we both know it's more complicated than this. So here is what I suggest. Task number one for the hurt partner. Take the time to let your partner know you need to talk. Say something like, I really need you to hear this and I just want you to listen. Do not try to swallow the pain. It doesn't work and it only intensifies the pain. And you're not sparing anyone by simmering on the inside because we all know it's going to come out at some point in some form. So take the time to talk about what you need. And if you need to be heard, say it. Task number two, have a support system. It's very important. I always talk about how you, we all need support system and especially in situations like this, you, it's very lonely and you can't expect to just contain all of this pain on your own. So make sure you have some type of a support system. But your partner is the one that needs to hear and acknowledge what this thing did to you. So even if you have someone to confide in, that will not be enough if you want to heal as a couple. So many times I will get couples that will tell me, oh, I'm, I'm talking to my best friend and I'm sharing with her or with him everything about this. And then the unfaithful partner is sitting there and saying, well, I didn't know anything about this. I don't know what you're talking about. I hope it's helping you. No, guys, this is not enough. Do that. But definitely the main person you need to share this with is your partner because you have to heal as a couple. You cannot expect to heal yourself magically with another person and just come in and plant yourself back into the relationship and everything will just be okay. I hope you understand that. And task number three, and this one is really important. When you talk about your pain, try to talk about how you feel about what happened or how dealing with this makes you feel. Stay away from lashing out, from name calling, and from harsh criticism as those encourage unfaithful partners to shut down and close up. I call it locking themselves in their shame room. Having a withdrawn partner when you talk about your pain is agonizing and hurtful. It's like you're opening your heart. You are so vulnerable at this moment and there's no one on the other side. So make sure that when you become vulnerable, you talk about how you feel about what happened and avoid lashing out, avoid the criticism. They're not going to help you and they're not going to get you the support that you really, really need at that moment. Okay, so there you have it. Three essential tasks for each partner, which will enable the highly important hearing of the pain. As one of my favorite couples therapists, Esther Perel, would say, this is when you talk about what it did to the hurt spouse. Later on, you will talk about what it meant to the unfaithful partner. And I would add, make sure you don't mix the two. There's no talking about why he or she did it before hearing the pain. Just trust me when I offer this bonus piece advice. Okay. I hope this was helpful and that you have a few tools in your toolbox now to get started with expressing and with hearing the pain. If you feel like you may need more guidance, no worries. I know how tough it gets trying to tread the waters of a fair recovery. So I'm reminding you to take advantage of my 45-minute free consultation to see if my infidelity recovery program is the perfect solution to help you heal and regain trust. If you're looking for a fully supported roadmap to healing that takes you from the crisis all the way to regaining a loving relationship based on trust, then you might be a perfect fit for my infidelity recovery program. It's okay to stay. All you have to do is go to edcharoni.com 
forward slash 45. Just pick a time to meet with me and we'll have an in-depth consultation via Zoom. Okay, time to say goodbye. Please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you can get alerts when each episode is out. And I'd love it and super appreciate it if you can rate the show on iTunes or on any other platform that you listen to podcasts so we can get as many couples getting this valuable information as possible. Have an amazing rest of your day or evening. I can't wait for our next episode. Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another episode of Relationships Uncomplicated. Please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. See more information at edithshironi.com and alinagershinoff.com.